It is well known that the efforts of automotive brands to create the ideal vehicle typically focus on adaptability to the intended environment. Under this premise, one of the most iconic British truck and bus manufacturers, Leyland Motors, was born, and it once had a significant impact not only in its home country but worldwide. Known for its success story, this brand became one of the most famous, enjoying a boom that made it one of the most representative globally. However, as is often the case, it went through various crises and difficult decisions that gradually led to a decline, ultimately ending its years of glory. The history of Leyland Motors traces its origins back to the distant year of 1896, when two British families, the Sumners and the Spuriers, joined forces to establish a company under the name Lancashire Steam Motor Company, focusing on products related to steam mechanisms. Although they started by selling items like lawn mowers, the progressive evolution of the company led them to build their first steam van with a payload capacity of 1.5 tons. This led to the development of steam wagons, which in turn drove the implementation of gasoline technologies. However, in 1907, the company underwent one of its first significant changes. After taking over the wagon company Coulthards of Preston, it acquired the iconic name by which it became known worldwide, Leyland Motors. Following this event, the company was able to expand its factories to improve the supply of units due to the high demand they were experiencing at that time. They were also able to start experimenting and developing better heavy-duty vehicles, which turned out to be beneficial sooner than they had expected. By 1912, the War Office began offering contracts to companies capable of developing heavy-duty transport trucks primarily for military purposes. Although there were various interested competitors, Leyland trucks, designed for loads of up to three tons, successfully met all the government's expectations. As a result, when the First World War broke out in 1914, the company was forced to allocate all its production efforts to military vehicles, temporarily ceasing civilian production. This was realized with the production of approximately 6,000 trucks assigned to the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom. However, the benefits were not only economic, but also in terms of constantly working with new gasoline engines, which helped them develop more capable units in all aspects. An interesting aspect is that in 1920, the company ventured into the production of a luxury passenger vehicle. Known as the Leyland 8, it was presented at the London Motor Show and was one of the most expensive cars on the market at the time. It was developed under the guidance of the project's chief engineer at that time, J.G. Perry Thomas, who also held the title of the Land Speed World Record. Unfortunately, only a limited number of units of this model were manufactured, and some of them are still stored and displayed in exhibitions to this day. By around the year 1925, Leyland Motors had already introduced approximately 40 different models to the market, including cargo and transport units as well as buses. Among the standout models were the M1 and O1 variants, which were passenger buses with capacities of 28 and 33 people, respectively. They also introduced the G-Series, from G1 to G8, which were based on the chassis used for military units in the Royal Air Force. All these models shared a common feature, as they were equipped with an in-house developed gasoline engine capable of delivering between 36 and 40 horsepower. By this point, the company had already established itself firmly, focused on continuous evolution and progress, presenting a series of models with names inspired by animals such as beaver, bison, buffalo, and hippo. However, Thanks to their cargo models offering capacities ranging from 2.5 to 12 tons and the positive image generated during the First World War, the British government turned to the brand again for the Second World War. With a production of around 10,000 military trucks, 
including cab over engine models like Retrievers and Hippo Mark II in 6x4 chassis configurations, Leyland also ventured into the construction of tanks. Initially, the company started producing Cromwell tanks in 1943 and later began manufacturing Centurion tanks, which were in production from 1945 to 1962, with approximately 4,429 tanks produced across all models and variants. The significant economic boom obtained from their participation during the Second World War opened doors to new opportunities in terms of global market reach and projection. By 1946, in partnership with the Associated Equipment Company, they decided to form the brand British United Traction, which was entirely dedicated to the development of trolleybuses, allowing them to strengthen their reputation in the British public transport sector. However, what truly marked a positive turning point for the Leyland brand was that in 1955, they managed to grant the necessary licenses for truck manufacturing in India. Under the name Ashok Leyland, this new brand successfully established itself as one of the most iconic and successful in the region, enduring even to this day. It has positioned itself as the second largest manufacturer of commercial vehicles in India and the third largest bus manufacturer in the world. During the period from 1951 to 1968, Leyland began acquiring companies through majority share acquisitions. These included brands such as Albion Motors, Danish Automobile Building, Scammel, and Standard Triumph, with markets ranging from bus and van production to military trucks and agricultural machinery. As time passed, the expansionism did not stop, and by 1960, the British had a group of companies dedicated to sectors such as construction, aircraft engine manufacturing, and armored combat vehicle production. Finally, in 1968, Leyland merged with another business group known as British Motor Holdings, becoming one of the most prominent names and one of the top five truck manufacturers in the world. However, the new entity, British Leyland Motor Corporation, never anticipated that managing numerous companies, some of which offered very similar products, would become one of their major problems that later led to financial troubles. In 1975, the holding officially declared bankruptcy, leading to the nationalization of the brand. Now simply called British Leyland, it had to split its production lines into Leyland Bus and Leyland Trucks, relying heavily on British sales and exports to Commonwealth countries. This crisis ultimately resulted in the individual sale of its divisions around 1987, including the now successful Ashok Leyland. The truck division was merged with DAF in the Netherlands, with the Dutch brand holding the majority stake and control of administrative management. Meanwhile, the bus division managed to stay afloat and operate independently, although regrettably, it was only for a short period before being acquired by Volvo. Interestingly, in 1980, a model known as the T-45 road train emerged, aiming to be the company's salvation and replace the iconic Marathon model from the 1970s. Despite winning the International Truck of the Year award, the emergence of rival models diminished the potential of this unit. After the merger with DAF, this model continued to be offered, but now under the name Leyland DAF 80, until its production ceased in 1994, when it was spiritually replaced by the DAF 85 model. Despite efforts to keep sales afloat, the economic downturn in the UK, one of its key markets, had inevitable repercussions for the DAF brand. Combined with the subsequent consequences in continental markets, this crisis led to both DAF and Leyland being acquired by Pacific Car and Foundry in 1996 and 1998, respectively. Today, the legacy of Leyland continues as one of the leading manufacturing companies in Great Britain. While they are focused on the development and production of light and medium trucks under the DAF brand, there is no doubt that Leyland will go down in history as one of the most iconic companies that managed to establish an automotive empire in its name throughout most of the 20th century.
Before you go, we'd like to recommend our channel, Gear Unlimited. You'll find excellent content on various topics that we're sure you'll enjoy. Thank you for joining our community. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification bell. Until next time.